Okay, um, President Conifor, we have quorum. Um, <clears throat> the minutes are out here. Um, have you all had a chance to look at the minutes? If you haven't, I'd like to give you a few seconds that if anybody wants to make any changes uh, to the minutes or comment on the minutes. On the minutes, uh, do we have a motion to approve these minutes? I'll move that we accept the minutes as presented. Second. 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 Okay. Uh, you, all in favor of approving name, the minutes? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, the budget report we have in front of us, um, we have some money. We haven't spent any money. Any comment on the budget report? No comment on the budget report. Okay, we'll accept the budget report and move forward. Or anybody move to accept the budget report? I'm sorry. So move. Seconded. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? No? Okay, moving on. All right, um, tonight, <clears throat> what we would like to do is to hear from the hunters uh, around the island um, on, and we have some folks from the DLNR that are here too that'll uh, take some of this. We would like to know what uh, some of the issues are that are facing hunters, whether it be access issues, whether it be game issues, whether it be whatever you feel is an issue whether it's or, or whatever or there any way or you know it just I, we've heard we've heard from bird hunters there's no birds you know just whatever it might be uh that you have concerns about we would like to hear from you this evening so we have something some kind of an agenda to start working forward on as we move forward um so with that um and if you have any solutions if you see something that hey uh, you know we're doing this this way we can fix it we can do it better uh, by doing this stuff or making a sm uh, small change. Uh, uh, anything like that that you folks can offer us, uh, we would appreciate hearing from you. Um, so with that, uh, I'd like to open this up to the public. So anybody here who would have anything they would like to come forward? Everybody's good? No problems with DLR? My God, good job. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> And when you come here, uh, state your name, uh, please, just so we can get a record of it. Uh, Abraham Antonio. Um, most of the issues is like land access to a lot of the forest reserve areas lately. A access? Yeah, you, land access. Okay. I mean. What would you like to see with access? What you'd like to see? Just get better access to the areas because there's a lot of forest areas that there's no access to. Could I uh, involve one of you to come up here for a minute, please? You have specific areas you're you're thinking about. Um, While we're here, we have something to work on. <laughs> not too familiar with the names, though. But if I had a map, if we had a map, then I would, you know, basically point them out. <coughs> But basically, uh, one area is like in Kona, I think join um, Unit I, Unit I, in the... You talking Makaula Uuma? Yeah. Up Koloko? Yeah, up Koloko, yeah. Yeah, the only legal access we have now is off of Makahi Street. Makahi Street. So and there's no other way to access that area through the other side roads that's backed up against the Forest Reserve in that area? Any road that that enters the forest reserve or accesses you can get access to as long as it's a public road that gets to that forest right. reserve okay and then there's just other areas you know in in on the hamakua coast that is really blocked up by ranch lands and private properties that there's no access public access to it yeah certain issues uh, my name is steve bergfeld with forestry and wildlife um there's certain areas that just because of the land situation, we can't really control the access. So isn't there no easement or can we make an easement to access those areas? Most of the private landowners aren't interested in having public access across their property. We are working, uh, Joey and 
his and Ron Bachman were working on an access near Akaka Falls. Right. Yeah, I already had few, a few conversations with Joey, so yeah. He kind yeah, of so that one's in that. the works. Um, we're trying to do a purchase of property from Finance Factors, Makahanaloa, to provide access to the Kaiviki section of Hilo Forest Reserve. Um, the Hoya Ka'au section, we trying to work with the lisi below that uh, section of Hamakua Forest Reserve to get access through the Mauna Kea Mu parcel. But certain areas is just really difficult because we don't have a state land adjoining it or a public right. road that goes to it. But we're we're actively looking at all of those parcels so what's where we have like, problems. What's basically the time frame? Are we still going to wait like another year, another 20 years, you know? Um, well, depends on which access you're referring to. Just in general. Well, each one is a separate issue that mm. we're working on. And there is a position that we did have uh, David Pinn that was working on access to different sections of forest reserves and game management areas, but he's since left that position, so it's vacant. So we're trying to get that filled, but you know, that's just a one of those things where he took another position. So what the work he was doing has been kind of at a standstill now. Okay. Um, the other issue is kind of on a game management area. <coughs> and I know a lot of them, uh, nobody really cares about the game and whatever, but as um, I informed Joey before too, there's a lot of work and even uh, Ian Cole, um, a lot of worms people been coming across like, how can we access that and kind of ha handle that problem? Maybe put out some, some way we can put out some wormers or something in different forest reserve areas or something because there's a lot of people that I'm talking to now and they're quite they're asking about that. Maybe Joey can better answer that. <laughs> Joey Mello, Forestry and Wildlife. Um, we're, we've, the, after the samples that you brought to us okay. and we got them identified, uh, yeah. and they, they are pretty common, right? And they go through waves when the, uh, as we talked before. Yeah. But for the knowledge of the rest of the people, that these, these things are out there. You know, one of them uh, is uh, uh, just picked up in earthworms and, and pigs eat earthworms. It's really hard to, uh, um, take care of the earthworms. As far as treating the animals, you know, we're kind of talking with the state vet to see if there's any kind of ideas. And uh, again, they don't work for DLNR, so we got to work on their time. But they are looking, you know, when they, when they go to uh, uh, conferences and, and such, they are try, trying to figure out if, if there is something that we can do to, uh, to help treat the, the wildlife. <coughs> Excuse me, could you explain that a little better about the worms when you're Cutting open the animal, you're seeing... Cutting them open, as you're um, dressing them out, you see infestation. Um, per um, Joey, it's, it's one time it was lungworms, the other time it was... Kidney, yeah, I think. Yeah, kinda like, we're kind of still, I guess we're still looking into that one yet. Mm -hmm, yeah. So you're seeing it like more than usual? Yeah, and then depends on it depends on which areas. Like I hunt in the Kulani area, and then I know a lot of people that hunt deep in the Pune area, and... It's like, oh, we're planting worms. And even up in Volcano area, I know a few guys that is like, oh, yeah, we just kind of discard the whole carcass because there's Gross. just too much worm, yeah. Yeah. wonder why but like that you say, is. it's kind of fluctuates, I guess. I, I'm yeah. not sure when, what season, like it's just winter or just summertime or, you know, what's really going on. Yeah. You Thanks know, for sharing that. You that all, all, uh, all mammals have, are susceptible to different nematodes like we talk about the regular roundworm in people the kids when they have pinworms yeah. um uh what is the the one we talk when people eat too much oh they say they have a tapeworm okay these are nematodes there are uh, uh uh host specific parasites uh some do several different species some are only specific to one species these particular ones are pig are known uh, pig parasites and i don't know any um uh, Buddy that has a younger memory than mine might uh, call me on this, but but basically they uh, they infect them. They, uh, sometimes they can live with them harmoniously. A good a good parasite does not kill its host. Okay, so what happens is they're they're uh, they're prevalent in a population. 
uh, the weak will die off, and then the, the, the population sometimes gets sh um, um, stronger and can fight off the parasites more, and you don't see as, many, um, uh, as much evidence. And then maybe they go through a, a, a time when uh, uh, the parasite uh, load is really low, so they start having more and more offspring that aren't as um, resistant, and then they pick up an infestation for whatever reason. And I don't even know from my career, anecdotally, I can't say that it's a necessarily a, as much a seasonal thing as like every few years we see the, uh, the numbers climb and we start getting more and more uh, 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 questions about it. And then it goes through a phases where, where we see less and less of it and uh, we, don't, we don't actually know what the reason is or what the cause of the, um, the rise in the fall. Isn't there some sort of a user-friendly um, access map of all, for the hunters easily available to them so they don't have to wonder? Um, certain areas, I, I think the hunters in those areas are familiar with the accesses in their local area, but if they're going out of district or something, then it's a little more difficult for them to find the access. Yeah. They got to talk to or people, but hunters. our... Uh, the Alehli program is currently working on a new recreation map that will um, hopefully all on one map provide uh, information about certain accesses, but that imp more detailed information is planned to be on our website because you can only put so much information on those maps. Yeah. But one just specifically about access I think would be really great for the hunters simple, straightforward, available. Yeah, we're working on the, what we consider, what we call a recreation map. For, so for anyone that wants to access the forest. For any purpose. Yeah. On that access, <clears throat> there were a couple of turkeys driving around Puawa last weekend. And about an hour of time was spent trying to figure out how to get to a hunting area. Uh, in Puawa, and the idea of signage uh, also, speaking of access, um, would have been really helpful to two hunters that I know. <laughs> yeah, um, that's also a project that's in the, the works. Puawa has, which is surprising, but it has hundreds of miles of roads within it. So we're planning on identifying the major. Well, some of them do, yeah. <laughs> So yes, that's another project that we're working on. Don't we have maps that already have trails on them? And aren't trails public access? And if there aren't any, and if there are gates um, um, that blocks these public access, what can a hunter do? Well, most gates are to restrict vehicular access. So if you, have, you come upon a gate in a forest reserve that you can legally access that forest reserve, you can bypass the gate and walk in, but you may not necessarily be able to drive your vehicle wherever you want to. Well, we're talking about public trails, so we're talking about trails, not road trails, not Jeep trails. We're talking about hiking trails. Yeah, Don't so we have a state map that have these trails? Uh, there may be something on the Naal Alley website, but what I've generally used throughout my career is just the USGS 1 to 24,000 quads which I buy at basically books. So that's how I get myself familiar with areas. But that's kind of old school. A lot of times you can get all that information on your phone, the Is that topo how you map get your apps. Ass, your access through the phone GPS? <coughs> I get a lot of information from my phone, yeah. And, uh, but there's still areas where there's, there's no, like what you're asking, no information about it. So Nala Haley doesn't have an existing map? that they can share with the hunters of all these walking trails? Uh, they have maps of the trails that they manage on their website, but every trail that a hunter uses is not a official <coughs> Na'alehele trail that they manage. So we have a lot of trails in lands that we manage that we just don't have the staff to maintain. So a lot of the public maintains those trails for us. So is there a concise map Gathering all the trails on one map? No, that's the recreation map that we're looking at, that we're in the process of putting together. So you're going to put together the recreational map to include all of the trails on the Naal map and all the existing trails in state map? Yeah, I mean, 
I don't know that we have room to put every map on every or every trail on every map because a lot of the trails, I, I'm not sure how much. Um, from my experiences hunting, I can go into Ola'a Track Volcano. My trail is different than maybe your trail. Yeah, right. So w there's trails all over the place. So we're not going to put, we'll only put like main trails on the maps like uh, Red Lepo Road going into Wailuku River, some people call State Trail, Marita Camp Trail, Humuula Trail, the main trails. But some of the other ones we won't be putting on maps. And I would say that a lot of the hunters don't want their trails on the maps. Yeah. So when you talk about access and you want th these access you're talking about, do you want these mapped out? Yes. <clears throat> like I said, I hunt in a lot in the Puna district, but if I wanted to venture out and go into um, Kohamaku or Gokau, then it would be more s easier to see where I actually can access those areas. I got a friend, that uh, my coworker, that's just starting hunting in out in the Kona side, and a lot of the areas in Kona is private land. And um, what is it called? Ooma o o is o like Oma track. Only legal places that you can go. Like with dogs or, you know, that's mainly the, the main thing. The couple other areas, you only can go with bows and guns. No dogs kind of deal. So on your trail map, will you have restriction of hunting? Well, what is allowed in the hunting areas? Well, the hunting... As, as, a, as a key component to designate which trails are for bow and arrows and which one are for with dogs or without dogs? I think they pretty much have that in the game mammal book if if you if you can access this through your phone and I have it on my phone, downloaded on my phone, so pretty much anybody can access that game mammal book and he has all information for that specific area. Yeah, so our intent with this recreation map is to provide information so that you can get to the edge of the forest reserve. It'll show some of the roads and trails within the forest reserves, but it's not going to show everybody's trail. Right. Because normally if there's an access point that you can reach the forest reserve, there's a trail somewhere pretty close. So if you spend a few minutes looking, you'll find the main trail that goes into that area. Uh, to further that. Uh, we don't want to overload that map with too much info, but what we're we're talking with the um, Nalahele staff to try to put uh, references on the map. So it may have like like this is an access to this certain area, and this certain area is Unit X, and then there'll be somewhere where you can find out what Unit A, B, C, D, and X is by going to Chapter 123, uh, Rules Regulating Game Mammal Hunting, or if it's a bird hunting area, you know, bird hunting. And then it, it'll, it'll also refer to like Nala Heli rules, where, where you can find those rules. And nowadays, all those rules are available on, on your phone if you have access to uh, uh, phone cell coverage. So. Abraham, thank you so much. <clears throat> I appreciate you coming forth and, you know, taking a stand. Back in the day, it was uh, so many hunters would go to the hearings and testify and really, really act up. And we carry signs in front of the DLNR, you know. <laughs> that was that was the day when there was a lot of hunter activity. And I miss those days. I feel sad about it, you know, because hunters got so discouraged. So I really appreciate you coming. That's what a lot of a lot of hunters is. They're discouraged because there's all this, you know, like you guys all know, there's all this fencing being done and stuff like yeah. that. And a lot of people, a lot of hunters, like they take in so much from us. So if what 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 can we do or how can we get anything back since they're taking so much away? Yeah. So it's kind of hard to organize anything because uh, me and my buddy um, trying to organize, you know, trying to bring back pig hunters of Hawaii. And that's kind of what I want to have a meeting with you, Tom, about sometime later. <clears throat> but it's just hard talking to people. And it's like, yeah, you know, they're still stuck in that stubborn way. So how can change their mind? It's like. They're taking so much. What what are we getting in return? And that's kind of like the the way of the world nowadays. What am I getting out of this deal? Yeah, yeah. And even if I bring that back or try to or whatever, it's like I'm not really getting nothing. It could be like you said, more. But we have laws, support. and the the yeah. laws protect the hunters. the The laws of Hawaii say hunters' rights protect the game resource, and the statutes and HCR twenty two. Um, so um, we just got to keep standing up for our rights. 
So yeah, I appreciate it, it. We have a lot of laws, but now there's, I guess, I'm kind of just beginning in all this, and there's like laws that's now there's watersheds and invasive species that kind of like overcap all those laws. So right. It's kind of like harder. A huge loss. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That's why so many hunters just gave up the regulations, the rules, Give the up, red tape. Upset. Ma- you know. Yeah, the restrictions, the loss of stock. The, there's not the game out there anymore. So I understand, but either then you, you fight then or you, you got, don't fight. You, yeah, as Ryan can probably say too, is, and you guys all know up in Mauna Kea, you have game management eras, but there's no game management going on. So why do you even call it a game managing area? It's just right. simple sense. Of that. There's no game in that managing area. Is yeah. what you're and saying? It's, and it says it's a game management area, but I guess invasive species and all that play a part too. So, like I said, that's what overcaps it all. So. Yeah, but I personally feel like the state, our state, could fight harder for us and our rights, the law that protects hunters and game. So. Yeah, that, then that goes into the part of you got to vote for the right people and get that right people into office. Until then, then we're kind of all stuck. Eh? Yeah. <clears throat> but we're all still standing, so you yeah. keep standing. Yeah. You know? The other part, maybe on the on the worms part, after we identify what's going on or <clears throat> have maybe have some kind of um, program or maybe even see if we can get some money to actually finance that, you know. Yeah. Or deworming program or something. Right. That that sounds like a really good idea to think about. What what would that take? <clears throat> no, his his question. He said, you know, can we find out what 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 are we talking about here? Those nematodes, nematodes. or worms or whatever you're. <clears throat> what what would that take to find out what what it is and. Uh, but we had, sorry. Joey Mello. Um, we we've identified them. Um, I would have to get back to you on what it would take to uh, to uh, figure out what to do about them because we're talking about a uh, a real expansive thing. I mean, when you consider that a uh, um, you know a hog farmer with hogs in a pen, he can go out and worm those hogs, right? And he can control where the droppings go so they don't reingest the reingest it so that he doesn't have to be worming them once a month. He can worm them once every six months. Uh, because even though he knows where the droppings go and they're not reingesting, they do get reinfected over time. Um, you see where I'm going with this? I mean, we're talking about pigs in a pen, and now we're talking about, you know, 10,000 hogs spread out over, well, we're talking about 2 million acres on this island, right? So it's an astronomical feat. Uh, we got, it's something we need to talk about, but, but, but I couldn't come up with an answer for you. Are, are they dangerous? They're they're not they're part you know with uh, particularly with uh, pigs you need to be careful because of the uh, brucellosis pseudorabies uh, pseudorabies not uh, contracted by humans but by dogs uh, pseudorabies and um, uh, leptospirosis and such things uh, they used to have uh, trichinosis as well uh, that pretty much hasn't been found in a while uh, those things that can affect humans uh, basically you should wear gloves uh, don't take a chance um, I do it I shouldn't. Uh, should wear gloves when you handle it. You shouldn't get uh, any raw pork in contact with your mucous membranes. And, but if you cook it well, that's why pork is recommended to cook higher than uh, most other meats. Uh, it, it doesn't affect human beings. It does, however, affect the carcass and the palatability, right? You see worms in meat, you're not going to want to eat them. Um, it, it affects their, uh, their livelihood. The pigs might be skinnier. Uh, there, there may be hardly any meat on it. They may, uh, the meat might look off-colored, and you know, when, when in doubt, throw it out, give it back to the aina. Um, that's the easy fix right now. The long-term fix would be what you know what Abraham and I are discussing here to try to figure out some way to some way to treat our animals. But when the time comes, if we figure out that out, maybe get some extra monies to help DNR or whatever. Yeah, no, and that's all part of what we need to know, right? <coughs> And uh, for our management strategy, uh, I'm going to move on here. But yeah, um, yeah. I, I just okay. want to ask you, Abraham, and anybody else. There's a form over there. If you could sign your name and email and uh, number, we could, um, in case we want more information or pass on information 
Um, um, I recently gave my that information to Donna. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And um, before you go tonight, are, are you, will you be here for the meeting? I would like to talk to you before you go. <clears throat> Dave Smith. Um, as far as the pertaining to the signage and stuff, um, it's going to date me, but 22 years ago, I did my Eagle Scout project, and I redid a trail in the state I was living in. And one of the options that we do have, because the youth of today seem to want to get involved in everything, and if we present to the Boy Scouts of America here, the Aloha Council on the Big Island, and help them set up Eagle Scout projects for the, the, the Boy Scouts that are ready for that, they can actually go in, do the signage, work on the donations, because that's what the project entails. You have to do a service to the community, and this would be a service to the community. It would get them involved, and it could provide for proper signage in a lot of these trails. Because I've only been out once. I went out with um, Uncle Stanley, but... There wasn't a lot of signage, and if I were to do it on my own, I mean, the only notion I would have had because I didn't have cell service was down and up because when you get up there, you don't really know. So that would be a suggestion is if we could ap approach the, the Boy Scout Council of America for the Aloha Council on the Big Island. Um, I believe the office is in, in Keau for the, the – and say, hey – we do have these opportunities. If Boy Scouts are looking to how can I affect my community, what kind of projects I can do, these are options that they have, and they can work in conjunction with us and uh, the DLNR for where they need to go and what they would need to do. So it's just an option. Yeah, that's a great idea. Get the Scouts doing stuff. Are you an Eagle Scout? Yeah. I'm part of the Boy Scout program. Um, I'm one of the uh, district advisors in Kona. Uh, but I can reach out to them and see what uh, what type of projects we can do. Definitely, mahalo for that. <clears throat> All right. Does anybody else want to say something? Do chats. <laughs> I, I would just like to say one more thing. Okay. I think um, the um, hunters unwilling to um, come forth and participate. Um, it is um it shouldn't it shouldn't mean that hunting and hunting opportunity doesn't go forward it shouldn't depend on the hunters lack of participation because their lack of participation is caused by the huge discouragements they they've suffered so um i would hope that the dlnr would continue to do their job according to the law to support our game and um the hunters, whether they get that participation or not. The burden shouldn't rest on hunter participation. I would just like to make that comment because so much is said, well, where's the hunter participation? They're out there. They're just discouraged. So they need to be encouraged. Well, that gets back to Abraham's <clears throat> comment too, which I think it's a valid one. One of the reasons why you mentioned pig hunters of Hawaii, one of the reasons why they were successful was because they were a unit of people. And there was somebody, I mean, there were bodies. It was not social media. It wasn't. Abraham Antonio. Um, Lincoln Pascual is my uh, my uncle, so. <laughs> you know, kind of like was involved. And in some, the, I know the Madera's family is pretty well. Mm -hmm. So I talked to um, Matt, the, the recent president, the last president, kind of recent. So I'm kind of doing all my research right now. You're talking about Matt Hofflinger? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'd like to uh, – that's something to pursue, I think, for, for hunters here, you know, to get them actually organized and getting them together. <clears throat> like I told Joey, too, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of the hunters nowadays, they're the younger generation, they don't have knowledge. Right. And who's training them? Who's teaching them all this? They're only learning from themselves, which is probably poachers or – their uncle that is a poacher or whatever, which is it's, it's kind of bad. So right, and you don't and you don't get much out of you know a computer. Yeah. Either. Yeah. Well, you uh. gotta try change this mindset. That's all. Mm -hmm. And so oh, I agree. Uh, and we'd love to work with you on that. You know? We we would definitely and love to work work, work <coughs> with you on that. In the uh, Hawaii Hunting Alliance, you know, I was, I was reading the comments recently, and you know, it seems like a lot of people are looking for a change. How are we going to do them? Don't know yet. Uh, still researching all that yet. You got to get started, right? Yeah. Get started somewhere. 
James yeah. O'Keefe here. Uh, Big Hunters of Hawaii, I was a member at one time too, and put they put on tremendous events for the the youth especially. You know, take, you know, a lot of fathers taking sons and daughters or uncles taking, you know, uh, nieces and nephews out, you know, trying to see who could get the best one on a on a given day or a given right. weekend. So it was a great way to introduce the young folks to uh, to the to the culture of hunting here, and uh, it'd be wonderful to see that uh, you know, r rise again. So, yep. best of success with that. How will DLNR, Forestry Division, and all the entities involved in our forests help promote hunting? in Hawaii with an organization that is about to be reformed, hopefully, and what kind of mechanism will they have in communicating with you folks in encouraging hunting in Hawaii? Well, I think anybody can come and contact us. I have an open door policy. They can call me anytime. They can email me, and we'll work with the pig hunters of Hawaii and try and address concerns that they have and find some common ground and come up with some solutions to some of their concerns. He mentions access. That's a pretty easy, non-controversial issue for the most part, although people on Oahu might differ with that statement because they're getting overcrowding in a lot of areas. But um, they can call me anytime. I know Joey used to go to the meetings all the time when uh, Pig Hunters of Hawaii was real active, so he worked with them a lot. They used to do volunteer projects for us up at Kanakolu and maintain the orchard. Uh, and I think that was part of our problem too, as the years, sounds like, as the years went on, is they were spread out too thin already. They was doing so much projects that they were, they were overworked and not enough people were helping out and showing up. Yeah. So the, the, core, the core was just getting tired already. Yeah, they actually helped us with uh, constructing a Ka'u Silver Sword Enclosure in Waikia Bog. So th there was collaboration in the past is what I'm hearing. And then you're saying that they can be collaboration. But was those collaboration encouraging hunting and promoting hunting? And I'm, I'm not sure where all this is going of your collaboration. But why would the hunt, if that type of collaboration was going on in the past, why would those hunters not be active today? Well, I think everybody has a busy life. so. You know, time goes on and you get grandchildren or children or change jobs or, you know, so we all have different well, demands on our it time. Wasn't because the f most of the forest was being fenced off from them? I mean, weren't there other factors into play with the, that the pig hunters of Hawaii were facing and had no control over? I think that's part of the problem. Like I said, I'm still... <coughs> so we can record it? <laughs> Um, like I said, I'm still researching everything yet, so I, I'm really not too sh sure. Like even tonight's the kind I wasn't really prepared. I just came to show up, but nobody else came up, so that's why I came. Thank up. you for coming up. Yeah. Thank uh, you. As far as your your question, yeah, I think it's a lot to do with the fencing. Like I said, and like he said, people grow up, and now we need this younger generation mm -hmm. that got to step up too. But a lot of them don't have knowledge of what's going on, really, of oh, anything. <laughs> thank you. Um, I want to ask a question about the fencing. Has the fencing been, um, has the fencing met its goal? I mean, has it been effective in the areas that are fenced off from the public? I mean, I don't know what goals the forest reserve or conservationists had had in mind in the past, but they fenced off all these areas. They must have had some goals. So have those goals been met by fencing off the forest? That's a really big question. We could go how on about, for hours and hours. How about finding us an answer that doesn't have to go on in hours and hours? Because the, have their goals been met? Well, I think s certain areas the goals have been met. And you see a change in the forest. I was just up at the uh, Upper Gila watershed last week Thursday where we did the public cattle hunt for the last three plus years. Fenced off 
put in five miles of fence, boundary fence to keep the cattle out of the forest. There's still a few cattle left in the forest, but the forest is recovering really well. Are hunters um, not allowed in that forest? No, they're allowed in the forest. It's a unit D. Okay. Uh, and this is not the venue for that discussion, but <clears throat> um, there, there are a couple of things that I think do contribute to this. And, and one of them is the guys on the ground here are trying to support the hunting in any way that they can, it seems. Um, you know, they work with us very well. Um, but I think your upper management, you know, primarily Mr. Smith and company and Case and company, uh, have this attitude that game does not belong here. And I think that affects an awful lot of the decision making that's made here. And to, to Teresa's question, uh, you know, have you met the goals? Um, you know, zero pigs in an ours area is a goal that, that's met. Um, but it doesn't do anything to help a hunter. It doesn't do anything to help anybody in this room. And, uh, and I think what a lot of discouragement comes from, at least we hear this all the time, you guys are doing all this stuff in the forest, all these fences, you guys are doing nothing for the hunters. What you guys going to do? We don't want game management plan. We're going to do nothing. So... We're going to talk to Ryan. They're talking about game management right now and, uh, and John Sabati uh, and where that might go. But that might be one area that would be helpful. Um, and I know that you guys are, you know, it's not coming from you. It's coming from on high. And, um, but we could and would love to enlist your aid to, um, you know, if you're just giving feedback to upper management and to Case and company, you know, it just... Um, that, hey, you know, we're not serving our public, and the public is who you serve, and they may not actually realize that. Um, in this state, I don't think believes that the land that, you know, I'm sure they think that you own it, but they don't. We do. And, you know, everything's in trust for us, right? So, uh, and, and I'm not criticizing you two. I'm just saying that I think that's part of the discouragement that we see, or we hear of anyway. Anyway, I'm done with that. Okay, um, moving on. Uh, I'd like to uh, next bring up John Sabati and Ryan Kohatsu um, to give us a little bit of uh, information on how their last meeting has gone and what they're moving forward with. So, John, um, why don't we start with you and, this, and uh, who you are, chair of the GMAC, state GMAC. Okay. Um First of all, I'm the chairman for the State Game Management Advisory Commission, also the Kona Side Commission of West Hawaii. Uh, Ryan Kohatsu is for East Hawaii. And then we have commissioners on each island, and we also have two commissioners for the island of Oahu. So we've been having these uh, meetings, and the meetings are pretty condensed because each island has to you know, have their share at the table to bring up their concerns uh, regarding our hunting and our hunting traditions. So we've been having some challenges. Uh, one of them is on the next agenda item is a game management plan. One of my challenges for West Hawaii has been hunter participation. I had meetings in uh, Waimea and Kona and uh, attendance has been poor. Uh, posted it in the newspaper, on the radio, uh, social media but the uh, turnout's been very poor. Uh, I was hoping for more support. Uh, I understand everybody's uh, feelings of what's going on, but um, if we don't step up, we can't um, get things done. In the past, hunters have contributed a lot, especially in uh, West Hawaii. Uh, I've been a uh, chapter president for the National Wild Turkey Federation, where we done a lot of habitat enhancement projects, where we planted several hundred trees, purchased a uh, water uh, tanks that's in uh, Puawa and on Mauna Kea, pipelines. Um, we actually help with uh, contributing in-kind services. So the volunteer time counts for the state when they have to do uh, matching when they're getting federal funding. And uh, we help provide o uh, over $20,000 in-kind services. Uh, we need more of that. We need more hunter participation. I think uh, without that, uh, we're not going to make a uh, headway. Talking to the hunters on uh, West Hawaii, 
um, some of the concerns are is it's getting harder and harder just not only to hunt but the simple things like getting your 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 tags. Uh, most of the people now um, because there's hardly any vendor selling uh, licenses that we buy the licenses online. But in uh, West Hawaii, Kona or you know if you want to get your tags, you got to drive all the way out to Waimea over 100 miles to get tags. So I talked to a uh, the Waimea office and to see about getting the tags online because some states in the mainland you can buy your tags online. So we're working at trying to make uh, it a little bit more s simple and accessible to get the documentation, licenses, and tags. One of the things that um, I know Tom's been working real hard on is that um, mentor program for the hunting where they do in the other states where a person can mentor a young person and take them out hunting. And, uh, but from my understanding, that bill didn't pass. Well, we like to see uh, youth hunts come back. Um, we need to um, get our kids out more, get them out from, uh, from behind the games and uh, cell phones and get them out and enjoy the outdoors. And that's where the passing on the tradition and the knowledge comes. Other concerns from uh, West Hawaii the hunting community is signage and boundaries, uh, like up on Mauna Kea. Um, we got word that the Unit A going up the Mauna Kea Observatory Road, the fencing is no longer the boundary. Um, according to Hawaiian Homelands, the f it's different. So it's hard because you can't see it on maps. Um, I think uh, A lot, lot of the hunting rules and regulations need to be looked at again and need to be adjusted with the changing of times and uh, with the type of equipment. And then also, uh, we did a lot of work on that game management plan, and I'll talk more about it uh, on the next agenda item. But I'm hoping and uh, that we can get more participation from the hunting community and the gathering community, and including the fishermen. Um, my term ends in June, so we'll be looking for somebody to uh, um, take over for West Hawaii. Um, it's uh, a volunteer position. It's uh, something that is much needed. The hard part is it's an advisory commission, so sometimes uh, we get disgruntled because what we bring forth is sometimes like it's not making progress, but um, things take time. And I'm hoping uh, we can be making some positive gains with the support of the hunting community. So th there's a lot on the plate, and I don't want to take up too much time. Um, but if anybody have questions, you can feel free to contact me. Um, Tom can provide you with my, uh, Tom Lodge can provide you with my contact information. And if you have uh, questions on the east side, you can contact Ryan. So I'd like to open a table to Ryan right now. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to thank the folks, the few folks that came to show up tonight because uh, I think um, uh, one of the items I identified was that, you know, the participation part of it. And it's pretty blatantly obvious what, you know, just looking right here, what the problem is. You had a pretty heated audience the last time. And uh, out of that came, you know, the item agenda that we discussed first here, and uh, those folks didn't show up. So that's, you know, if they want to complain and then they don't complain when it's time to complain. Well, you get what you get. But um, back to the state, the state game management uh, advisory commission. Some of the things that happened. I mean, John covered a lot of it already. There was um, one action item on there that uh, you could. Uh, imply some other things out of. So item four was, we had a letter to the BLNR, one of the commissioners wrote um, some uh, advisory uh, uh, advice to the to the, um, to the the board about the Wai'anae uh, aerial shooting and stuff. It's not for Big Island, but the vote was um, telling of, of how things are, are going to move forward. So we all voted in favor because people want to work with the community and stuff. And um, Administrator Dave Smith was a no vote. He didn't want any of that. So, um, you know, that's, I'm just reporting in here. You guys can infer what you want out of that. But um, 
Other than that, I I did you know there was questioning on on the um on the game management plan and they had some game for stuff and one of my other items was the wanton waste thing. Uh, Dave Smith was in in favor of maybe uh, pursuing something like that. As with anything, uh, that stuff needs public support and anything that's public. So um, if people don't care about it, then nothing's gonna happen. Um, and then yeah, on the game management plan, there was something. Uh, I had a small line of questioning with the with the administrator just about um, the prerogative of who gets to manage game mammals on state land, and this is always going to be, I don't know, I think the biggest wall all the time. So you can get all the participation, we can do all the projects, uh, all these great community things, and everyone can be on board. But if at the end of the day, uh, the ma the animals that they have in certain areas that would reasonably make sense to keep them if they can't even keep them in those areas. And those areas get put with policies that, well, you can hunt them to zero, but you can't maintain them in any fashion. Then obviously the public is discouraged and they don't want to work anymore on these things. So um, that's always the, the number one. That's the elephant in the room, right? These, these bigger policies that have a higher uh, higher direction from leadership above if that direction doesn't come to the people who may mean well down below we go nowhere so and that's uh here nor there I, it's just the you know the atmosphere of politics in Hawaii but uh uh other than that I don't know I mean I can John covered a lot of it so any questions I can, <laughs> I can go over it. um oh and i did have another one um there's uh, just you know we have the state commission we have the county commission and uh, this is maybe more an opinion thing but i did gather it from the last meeting as well that there are two sides uh, i feel to, to to this change there's the internal change that we're working with here government to government inside of it advocacy and then there's the external side the people that you know and the public that support these things and need to create the political atmosphere to create the change. Um, I think we've gone about as far as we can go within the system. We've built this commission, we built these things, it's great. Uh, a lot of hurdles have been identified and some of those hurdles I don't think are gonna be solved within our, our groups. These are things that maybe some public support or pressure may change or whatever, but I just, I just want to uh, forward that that there was there was an exchange in the last meeting, and what I gathered was that that you know the leadership has no interest in uh, in pursuing thing something like a game management plan. They may pursue it right on a piece of paper, but there's no there's nothing that says you got to do it. You know, and it's like anything, right? You can 183D. You have rules protecting game, and you have uh, other other statutes protecting endangered species, but you can pick and choose which one you want to do as long as someone's not willing to uh, take you to court for it or something like that. So, um, yeah, a lot of challenges, kind of spitting in the wind every once in a while, but that's the, that's the hard truth. One of the things that I see on this game management plan, <coughs> excuse me, is that I understand that it was floated, the idea of having uh, this game management plan uh, contracted out to an organization or an individual or whatever it is to write the plan for you. Is that correct? No. Excuse guys, me, Tom. Yes. Ex excuse me, Chair. Um, if we're going to move on to the game management plan, that's the next agenda item. So um, if anybody in uh, the public has questions for Ryan and I, we should go that way. And then once that's done, we should move on to the next one to discuss the game management plan in detail. Right. My question still stands, so it is, was that one of the things that was floated to have a contractor do the... And I'm asking DLNR here, yeah. Joey Mello. Uh, yeah, it was, it was discussed amongst the, um, uh, our administrative staff whether it would be done in-house or whether we'd hire somebody out. And where did that go? Uh, right. No decision In was limbo made. right now? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Oh, sorry, uh, Chair. I did have one item. Yeah. Um, 
I'm also looking for potentially a replacement for my position as well. I think it's just fair to find anybody who wants to take on that kuleana to do so. Um, it's just, uh, like I said, I've identified what the issue is. I don't believe I'm going to fix it in the position that I'm in. And uh, I think there's maybe other ways to pursue that. But um, yeah, right now, searching. I don't know the process of how that works to put somebody else in, but I'm just putting it out there on the record as well. I appreciate that. Um, so I have a question. This is like for uh, John and Ryan. It's kind of a um, global question. In your experience, have you found that the state has a um, a game management policy? The policy would be you can go hunting for game. Uh, the policy would be... So, so, excuse yeah. me, but there is no management of the game, right? It's, so if you it's say basically the word, impact. It's, yeah. So you Time, can, manner, place of take. Yeah, you can go hunting, you can take home. If you're reducing the numbers, it's fine. But if you were to ever say, I'm trying to maintain a game mammal population in any fashion, doesn't matter if it's a number or whatever it is, my experience would tell me that that word maintaining uh, long-term maintenance, sustainable yield, those things have become against the policy of the leadership. So there probably is not a policy of game management in the state. Well, yeah, well, it, it determined... Um, I'm going to say this not from my opinionated point of view. When, when someone says management, it could mean a lot of things. No, so no, if no. you're but managing for nothing, you could manage for nothing. Wait, 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 yeah. right. <laughs> there, there is an acceptable definition of game management. Oh, and it, and yeah, it talks is. about things like sustainable yield and all of that. Yeah. So my sure. question to both of you guys is, in your experience now, having sat up at that higher sure. level, is there such a policy in the state? Yeah, you know, simply yes or no. No. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. So, Sorry, um, let me clarify. For game mammals, no. <laughs> yeah, <coughs> game birds, they don't seem to, whatever. But mammals, there's this big thing because endangered species, whatever. <laughs> but generally, if you talk about game management, you know, th there is an accepted definition of that. Yeah. So what I'm asking is, in your experience, have you guys found... Um, what I have found over the years is that there, there is basically no management of the game. It's, it's basically, as um, Dave Smith said once, impact management. Impact. It's time, time manner, place yeah. of take. Impact or a hunting program versus a yeah, game yeah. management program, okay. yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Nani well, here. This um, second. Uh, apparently, we're officially in new business. Can I, can I still make a comment, though? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, from what Ryan's saying, um, the Hawaii Constitution states that the game shall be conserved, protected, and promoted. The Hawaii Revised Statutes 183 says that the DLNR shall preserve, protect, and promote public hunting. HCR 22 states that our game shall be preserved, protected, and promoted. So um, basically, the state is breaking the law. They're not supporting what the law says for them to do. They're not fighting for the rights of the local people and our laws that protect us. I just want to make that clear, that that is what's happening. And we don't have to bend over and take it. That's what I'd like to say. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, it's just we, yeah. You propose ideas and, and, and good things, maybe, and even reasonable things in a, in a lot of places. Um, I cannot go into a lot of, I wish I could go into detail of like all the little projects that people have done over time um, uh, pertaining to game mammals and those type of things. And they were very good. Some of them, you would think there should be no problem with it. But all it takes is somebody in a higher up position that has uh, environmental um, views on things and they just kind of stomp those things out. But our state can fight for their people's rights, for the local 
laws. They can, no. but they don't. There's a there's a prerogative, yeah. I I I feel that there would be a prerogative, not. but they just don't bow take it. to the lawsuits. Sure. They just say, okay, give. Absolutely, yeah. They don't I report mean, to the federal government yeah. that the agendas, the projects are failing. They don't do any follow up. They just destroy, yeah. destroy, destroy, and don't do a result report. Yeah, and I, I guess sharing, you know, a lot of the guys that are on the ground here, they do they do great stuff, and they and they try really hard. Um, upper leadership is just different, just what I've seen. Um, yeah, no, no, um, but, right. Yeah. There's a lot of great just, people just doing yeah, their job. Yeah, and the thing is, the thing is, a lot of their funding comes from the federal government. So, you know, yeah. you got to, I mean, I don't know how easy a way to say it, but you appease whoever's paying your check, paycheck, right? So, but there's such a <laughs> thing as right and wrong. There is, yeah. And the, the public, I guess, needs to be more involved in, in, in the pressure or the, I guess, the, the changing of, of the yeah. political wind to protect. Uh, I just want to say, you know, um, even if you feel horribly discouraged, you want to throw in the towel, you shouldn't um, project that because it makes even more discouragement for something. We, what do you want to do? You want to uh, say your life you fought or you want to say of your life you gave up? N not good choices because you can't win, but. <laughs> oh, if, if that was the question, yeah. Um, not told. Uh, not totally giving up. I think, I think it's it's an exercise in in civics. I think I think pe more people need to be involved and pick up that kuleana. But the second part of it is that, um, like Antonio was saying, our community of hunters they're very, um, just in my opinion, they're very not educated in in how things work and why they are the way they are. Right. And, and why should they be? They don't get paid to do that. Yeah. Well, I see. Yeah, I see my task. After leaving this, my task will probably be toward trying to educate our, our, yeah. our community a little but better. But I think you shouldn't pick so much on the hunters for not participating. Yeah. They've been oh, horribly yeah. discouraged. Sure. Their legs have been cut off, and then they're told to run. So well, not told to run. It's just that's, a, that's a choice they <laughs> <Do> make. <something. laughs> but it shouldn't depend upon them because um, they have suffered horrible losses and discouragements. Yeah, absolutely. It right. should be up to the DLNR to carry out their responsibility sure. according to the laws of the land. It's sure. their responsibility and it's their fault oh. that the hunters are discouraged and not participating. Sure. It's not the hunter's fault. Yeah. It's the DLNR's fault. Yeah. That's what I say. Well, I didn't mean to take up the time, but I'm, I'm sure. Sorry. I'm sure maybe I'm John, I'm sure maybe John can answer so many questions some too. <laughs> Okay, um, John, you want to weigh in on this for a minute? Uh, but before you do, I just want to make one comment <clears throat> on this game management plan. For, my, for myself, <clears throat> to have something contracted out to DLNR, you know, like what we did with Hofflinger, right? We were essentially a contracted organization, which essentially was dismissed by, I mean, you, know, you, you, you can either accept it or not accept it, right? When you, uh, why don't you come up here actually, so I can, either one of you, uh, or both of you, or. <laughs> but <clears throat> um, what we have proposed is that when we got this game management plan back from, have you seen the new draft? That I didn't read the whole thing yet. From you have. I well. I, okay, I lied. Um, I read the whole thing, but I was falling asleep trying to do it, so I, I didn't comprehend the whole thing yet. Okay. Well, you got through the first three pages, right? Yeah. First three okay. paragraph well, uh, chapters. The yeah. <laughs> that pretty well sets the tone for the whole plan. Yeah. And it really has nothing to do with managing the plan or managing the game. And what my uh, proposal would be would be to take maybe you and Steve and a group of us and sit down and work together, come up with a plan that DLNR and the hunters come up with, and turn that in. That way, at least, it's now your, I mean, even though it was your plan to start with, I mean, DLNR was involved with us all, all along the way. Uh, Dave Smith as well, you know, it just, we didn't have anything to do with it. But, <clears throat> but in fact, that you had. And, uh, and you know, we saw the drafts, and nothing came out of it until after it was published. And 
Uh, and that's where we, the excuse was that, well, you know, we don't like the plan, you trash us and all this other stuff. So we waited for 10 years and, or however many years it was, and we finally got uh, a plan on, on our desk, which l doesn't look like it took more than 15 minutes to change. Um, there were no fresh ideas in it other than uh, the land belongs to the birds, essentially. Um, and... Uh, and this, I think, needs to change. I think what I would propose, would be, and I'd like to get your feedback on that, is that if we did come up with a plan together, would that work uh, for the Big Island? Personally, um, I would agree with you that uh, we should be the primary author of the plan right. with, with the help of the hunting community. Uh, I don't know if I like your idea that I'm involved <laughs> well, your name's on the on, your name's <laughs> right, on writing there. yeah yeah, yeah we, we have uh it, it it will take a lot of time uh, uh that does not mean i would not be uh, uh advisory but i don't yeah. know about writing the plan what would take a lot of time writing up a game management plan is there one written up already 49 states have plans the don't, I mean, isn't that what you're looking at, a game management plan? Uh, yeah, but uh, you're addressing the fact that that start all over, right, Tom? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, wait, 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 wait. Wait. You know, my experience has been, and I, I'm not getting on your case, huh, that any time um, state, county, local jurisdictions want to do something, what they do usually is they get somebody on staff to go look at all the other jurisdictions <coughs> and sort of do a compendium of what's out there. And, and I, you know, like the National Association of State Governments, and uh, they have these model, um, you know, laws, statutes that you can go to and and you could, I mean, if, how much you paying? I'll do that. You know, I mean, it's not nuclear science. And for somebody to say that, oh, you're gonna you're gonna go out and and contract this out, uh, you, you gotta look at what's out there right now. And. DLNR does not have a staff person that can do that. I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I think I think that's what should be done. Somebody should tell DLNR. Go do go do a review of all the laws. Uh, that actually, uh, I don't know how many times that come down, Ike, but um, one of the big problems that we have is at the top. Dave Smith says we have a hunting program. We don't have a game management plan. That's his position. And that's Case's position. Yeah, but Tom. How do we get but, through but that? We, we've all come to the conclusion, State of Hawaii has a constitution that says something, has statutes that say something, has resolutions that say something, but we don't. We do not have a policy right. that is coming down to the the operational levels. So, you know, if that's what's got to be done, that's what's got to be done. But, like Ryan said, you got to organize because definitely the the bureaucracy isn't going to do it. So, where does the the impetus for that come from? Well. Antonio came up with a suggestion that I think is something to pursue. So unless people stand up and start saying this, you know, I've, I've been sitting on this, this August body now for five years. I've been saying the same thing over and over and over again. You need a policy. Right. You need a serious policy. You need a department that believes that hunting is important to the people or for the people. And they gotta go do it. And it's not, it's not nuclear science. I mean, 49, of, 49 states have a game management plan. 
How come the state of Hawaii does not? It, if I could, he said that if hunting is important for the people, I think he may have meant if the game species are important to the people because we can always hunt as much as we like. That's, that's always encouraged. But what's not encouraged is the maintenance of our game species, certain game species. So there. So, so yeah. Ryan, I, I agree with that. But unless you have a policy that says that, it's not going to happen. And, you know, John was talking about fishermen. I mean, we have aquatic resources that we have the same problems out there. So how come we need the resources a as a community, as a state, and yet those resources are not being managed so that we can go out and have mutton on the table or pork on the table or venison on the table. You know, for me to go to Lanai and shoot, shoot a deer is almost impossible. I mean, you know, we have, we have limited resources. I don't know, you, you just gave me a bad look over there, but it takes money to go to Lanai, you know. I'd rather go Montana if I'm going to spend that money. Okay, so I mean, you know, this might sound like I'm grumbling, but I've sat here patiently for five years. I've said the same thing about the state adopting a hunting and a fishing policy that talks about these, these resources as being sustenance for the people. The law says that. The Constitution says that. The it, statute says that. It, it is an election year, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, we don't talk about this, so I'm not hearing it, but I thought there was going to be an approval of the existing game management plan that was before DLNR. Am, am, am I misinformed? Yes. Uh -huh. You are misinformed. We rejected it outright. Who rejected it? We, we did? did. I don't remember rejecting it. Uh, you were part of the vote. To reject the existing game management plan? Yes, and the original writers of the plan rejected it. Whether this council or commission uh, rejected it or not really had little point. But the commission was promised a look at this plan by DLNR. And that was the only reason that the commission got it, that they finally said, okay, we'll give it to you, and they did. But when we looked at it, that plan had been modified beyond uh, reason, and it was rejected. So therefore, we're talking about reconstructing, if that's at all possible. John, can you give some input, John? Okay, so we're actually now on the new business on the agenda of, on the game management plan, correct? Yep, have been for a while. Well, okay. Uh, excuse me, uh, hang John. on, John. Just got one quick one. Oh, um, no. I had a meeting with Ian Cole and uh, Officer Weller uh, about a month ago, and with uh, Dustin Warmer and something came up about uh, like what John was saying about uh, youth hunts and stuff like that. So we proposed to them if they could look, start looking into uh, the tree planting area and the buffer zone area. It's open six months out of the year and closed six months out of the year, but maybe the first month you can turn that area into a youth hunting area. Just, a, just was a thought at that closed meeting. So instead of it will be like open for seven, close for month, f close for five, but that first month will be just for youth. Remember, there's a lot of other hunters out there that may differ, so that may have to go out into a rule change and go through the process of a rule change for that. Yes, otherwise, let's get back to John. Okay, John, go ahead. You have the floor. Okay, so the game management plan was. Uh, over 10 years ago, a group of us got together working with two members of DLNR, Scott Fretz and Ed Johnston. And we worked on creating this five-year game management plan. We submitted the plan and it just sat. 
Then over 10 years, uh, it comes back to us. And they actually rewritten the plan. And it was brought to our attention that a lot of the stuff in the rewrite, I mean, you compared the, game, the original game management plan we submitted, and the one that was submitted back to us was night and day. And a lot of it seemed not to be more in game management, but more for endangered species. And that's some of the, the big challenges we face is with a game management plan is because certain areas you have to um, manage the endangered species. So at the last uh, game commission meeting we had, it was uh, decided that um, we put together a working committee, a working group, and to do a rewrite. Um, looking for new people who would like to help with that because a lot of the original committee members are, uh, as we say, retired, uh, even passed away. So that is the plan right now uh, to put together a new committee to do a rewrite for the game, um, game management plan. Uh, I think uh, the game management plan is for the Big Island. Um, I heard that Lanai has to come up with one for their lease agreement. Uh, it should be a work in progress because personally I feel game management plan can be cut, carved in stone because you got um, things that can change. So it should be able to um, have some ability to make adjustments in it even though if it's a five-year plan, what if you have drought conditions come up or wildfire or something? So um, this should be in the game management plan uh, some flexibility to make adjustments. So um, that's where the game management plan stands right now. But the biggest challenge uh, for game management plan is endangered species. Like Ryan said, because the state uses a lot of federal funds and uh, that's where the issues come in. Um, I would like to see in the game management plan um, more of the habitat enhancement and wildfire management. And then uh, Ryan, who introduced the the, the waste uh, laws, you know, um, similar to what Alaska has. Um, we need to place a manage uh, a value on the game mammals. Uh, that's the only way we, I, I think uh, we can succeed. All the other states. They place a value on the animals. Uh, I don't care what state you go, you gotta pay for a tag. And the tag money goes into the funds to manage the, the game. Um, Hawaii, we don't have tags. Um, I'm for tags. Some other guys I talk to are against it. But if we don't invest into our game and don't place a value on it, um, we're not gonna, I feel we're not gonna succeed. If you look at the Wildlife Revolving Fund report, uh, license sales and tag sales, you can see that the non-resident license sales and tags are slowly increasing um, with each year. It's because uh, Hawaii has uh, gaining popularity as not only a vacation destination, but a sportsman destination as well. And that money coming in helps with our game management. I feel though the money should be earmarked. It shouldn't be just thrown in a wildlife revolving fund. So in the game management plan, um, that should be included in there. I mean, if you we paying for a sheep tag, that money for the sheep tag should be spent on managing sheep. If we're paying for a turkey tag, that should be spent on managing the turkeys, et cetera, and so on. Um, if you have the chance, tell your friends, to all the hunters and gatherers, fishermen, you know, to look up the wildlife revolving fund. You can see the monies that come in and how the monies are being spent. And then it'll be a real eye-opener because I think some changes need to be done where it would really help with our uh, game management. But right now we're looking for people who are willing to step up into the committee and help with the game management plan. It's going to be a lot of work. Um, we're looking at a five-year plan. If you have uh, any questions, you can contact Ryan or you can contact me. But that's basically it right now where the game management plan stands. It has to go for a rewrite.
Yeah, I, I personally haven't read that whole document anyway, and um, I'm not complaining that I haven't, and honestly, because whatever it is, what it is, I'm I'm kind of sarcastic in the fact that we can write all we want, but they're not going to adopt it anyway. So, um, but there is a uh, in the statute that governs the Hawaii State Game Management Advisory Commission, the commission I'm uh, serving on, and John as well. There is a line in there that says, I believe, advise or something to the effect of identify areas that can be used for game production, yada, yada, yada. Um, uh, as an exercise, uh, it, it could just be asked, can the, even the department identify on a map any acreage that you can keep, sheep, goats, whatever, just, just show the acreage, we can keep them, we can keep them, right? Because quite, I'm gonna be honest, no one's going to draw on a map and tell you I can keep them here. It might be a found grass or pasture of 100 to 200 years pasture, but I don't know, I can't keep them here. Why? Because there's an endangered species five miles over here or something like that. So um, it would. all I'm saying is it's great to put the plan on a paper, but if the plan itself doesn't coincide with a policy that says, oh, I can keep these things in anywhere, in the lands that we do have, then... I mean, it would be like everything else. It just kind of gets thrown on the side. I'm not trying to be negative about it, but it's just if we don't have a policy that identifies where you can keep them, even at that level, like if then, man, it's like I have all these great ideas to build a big Walmart, but I have no land to put it on, you know? I mean, it's the same thing. So, and that's not with the staff that's here. I mean, unfortunately, that's what that's with the higher ups to create that so I don't know I remember Lisa at one time talking about maps and she wanted to do that once you know maybe there was some interest there and I know she did work but um, right now it just I don't know felt like I ran into a wall and hitting that kind of thing with the current uh, current administration the first bill that we had submitted on the game commission had a project attached to it and um, Somehow, where Billy Kanoi or the the mayor, the big island, was supposed to come up with a hundred grand for the commission, which Billy Kanoi, by the way, I don't know if you folks realize this or not, but uh, he has leukemia. I, I think it is, and uh, I really pray that uh, he survives this. And he's are great for us here at this commission, uh, as well as the county. But he was willing to put up the hundred grand that they asked for uh, on that, and I think that that was a poison pill. And when he decided to say, "Oh yeah, we'll do it," um, the bill killed or died or died in committee. But that is something we've been talking about for a long time. Back, to remember the nog. Uh, part of the nog, the result of the nog was that there was supposed to be a project in the watershed. And that never came to be. And I was just wondering, do you see a way that we could actually? Uh, do a project, you know, they were, Ryan tried to get, they got 200 animals off the mountain, couldn't put it anywhere, they had to put it in Kiamoku. Um, you know, why not find an area, if Hulu is, you know, a degraded area right now, you know, it just, what's the risk to do a project in Hulu? you know, in spite of this HCP, because the HCP is not done either, so it's not there. So is that something that's viable? I don't know. We have to ask on the way up. Like I mean, we've talked about our um, upper management, right? Um, I do want to go back and answer the original question. I think it was answered in uh, um, in a way about um, writing the game management plan. I'd like to ask it with a rhetorical question back to you and everybody else. You know, and basically it's the which came first, the chicken or the egg? Okay, I hear Ike talking about it, it makes a lot of sense. I hear Ryan talking about it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, what is it that we really have to go after? Do we have to go after drawing up a game management plan, going through that exercise, and then crossing our fingers that we, the state, are gonna buy into it? Or do we have to first convince the state to manage game? Well, that's the chicken right there. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. That's a good comment. But, um, <clears throat> they have to have something to fry, right? There's, there's the start of an answer. <laughs> <laughs> 
So anyway, that's something that I think that we should uh, kick around and, and see if we could come up with something, or at least a project. Try and get you know buy-in from you and Kanalo and whoever else is working in that area, and say, okay, look, we want to do this and see if that works and you know maybe work from that angle uh, but that this is something that we don't want to let lay we mm -hmm. want to keep this thing moving on so anyone else anybody else want to contribute to the game management discussion because uh, I agree with <laughs> everything that's been said so far um, okay um, if not then thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thanks, Ryan. Thanks, John. Uh, uh, that, there's, that there's jurisdiction, but that the policy has not been implemented. With your experience as a, as a uh, esteemed uh, government official, how would you do that policy? How would you implement it, and what would your strategy be to do it well, you know, uh, it, it comes down to people like uh, I forget Antonio over there, and and this this gentleman here. That so, somewhere along the line, people have to stand up and and begin to voice this concern, and then you got to work it through the political process. But you have to have one voice, so. You know, my my conclusions on all of this is we gotta we, we gotta talk policy. You know, not not only in um, mammals and birds, but in the fish, aquatics resources, and and we have to start talking about all of these things as if they they are resources. So. You know, it's it's doing political organizing, I guess. That's where you got to go. Because all of us come to these meetings and we all know what the, what the so-called problems are and the issues. But we never are able to coalesce into one voice. So that's my suggestion. You gotta have one voice. You gotta be able to talk to your representatives and senators and the governor, and you gotta tell them, hey, something gotta be done. So, you know, as I said, uh, this thing about gay management, the plan and all of that, uh, it shouldn't be that difficult to go out go do a review of 50 states or 49 states, come up with some kind of uh, draft document. And um, there, there might be a, a draft, a draft resource management plan out there already that you just pick up and you fill in the blanks. So I'm not certain how much work that should be. But that's my two cents. You know, sorry, I don't have the silver bullet. Bob, but, um, Nani, um, what would you do? What would you say would be the way? Attorneys came into the, uh, into the uh, land management decision-making process, and we're able to um, uh, win large mitigation packages. If there's a value on game mammals, and there is because it's guaranteed in the Constitution, then those game mammals, when they are being fenced and eradicated, that's a loss. That is a mitigatable loss. So if you want, for example, Today's paper showed that the Volcanoes National Park recently fenced 60 miles of fence at Kahuku. They want to do another 10 miles. It was at, at $100.25,000 a mile. That's $7.25 million. We're not talking chump change. 
if they want to take game out of that area, they need to pay. That's what the environmentalists would do. You know, if we, a question to ask is, how many people, hunters, have died doing this work and have seen nothing? Yeah. And why would you continue doing the same thing with the same results? I mean, it, that, that, that's the definition of, of, a, of a mental illness. You know, there needs to be a change uh, and there needs to, the Constitution guarantees it and there needs, and the Constitution needs to be maintained. Yeah, so um, the animals, the, our game, belong to the people of Hawaii. And they have been entrusted to the DLNR to protect our rights, our ownership of the game resources. And they are not, and nobody's being held account uh, accountable. So I think um, it's holding these people accountable. They're taking our resources that belong to us without asking, without telling, without respect of our laws. So the National Park should be held accountable for doing this. All of the animal killings should be, um, they should be exposed. All of this should be exposed. I, I think that would be one of the ways to go. Expose them. But thank you, Bob. Thank you for sharing. That was really good. Yes, sir. I do have a question getting back to uh, Ryan's on the wanton waste. And assuming that law was in effect, let's say that we did get a wanton waste bill passed and, and into administrative rules. These pigs that are infected with these nematodes, if a hunter left that pig in the forest, uh, first off, who would know? But secondly, um, how would you, how do you, how do you separate something like that if they would, leave, like you said, just leave it, leave it to the INA, right? How, how do you, rectify that or justify that with a wanton waste bill? How, how would that work? Uh, I don't know. There would, it would have to be justified some way, right? Uh, it would have to be uh, justified to the point that a uh, conservation officer would accept it, or if he didn't, it would be accepted in the in court. Photographs? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. That would be part of the discussion of a wanton waste law. Well, you know, and you're talking about tags, and John's talking about tags. I mean, tags is another way to, you know, if it's going to cost you money for a tag, um, that may be one way to, you know, and then they can inspect the animal and say, okay, this animal's waste, and it's not, you know, not wanton, and you get keep, get to keep your tag uh, or something like that But in the inspection process. And where does the money come from, right, for that, too? Uh, so, yeah, okay, all right, thank you. Now, this is a question I had that when you brought that up in the, Thing. Anybody else have any comment, suggestion? Otherwise, I think I'm going to turn this over to Malia. Oh, did, wait. Did you discuss the rule change yet? Wait, 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 wait. I thought we were still on the yes, game minute. Sorry. Okay. No sorry, problem. Sorry. Okay, I want to move into um, the rules change. Uh, now, I had some of these things printed, um, but basically uh, we want to start a process on the administrative rules for our uh, hunting. And I just have some examples right here that I took out of uh, chapter 123 uh, on how we would like to see this information come back from the public. and. Uh, Already Ryan's group has uh, given us some uh, thoughts on this, on the bird hunting, especially on the types of, uh, for turkey hunting, types of shot uh, that's available out there. But <clears throat> as an example, uh, the rules say, I'm just gonna go through this quickly. The rules say that uh, in chapter 123.22, with respect to firearms, for example, and archery equipment, the following conditions and restrictions shall apply. No person shall possess or discharge any firearm or archery equipment within any public hunting area without having a valid state of Hawaii hunting license in their possession. And we can come back to 16 miles on this one too. But um, 
And when hunting with the use of dogs, no person should use cartridge firing rifles with a muzzle discharge energy. Rating of less than 1,200 foot pounds, shotguns loaded with shots smaller than zero, zero buck. Muzzle loader rifles with less than 44 caliber, bore diameter regardless of mode of ignition, handguns except as prescribed. Now, those are pretty innocuous by, the, by, by themselves, but uh, they do create some problems. And on the um, foot pounds of energy, for example, uh, we would change that to, when hunting without the use of dogs, no person shall use the following. We would eliminate that cartridge firing rifles with a muzzle discharge energy rating of less than 1,200 foot pounds altogether. Uh, there's no purpose for it anymore. Um, people are shooting uh, African game with air guns and uh, putting away. So this 1,200 foot pounds, that, you know, it has no basis. Uh, muzzle loaders, uh, some of them don't come up with 1,200 foot pounds. Um, but on the muzzleloader one, uh, rather muzzleloading rifles um, with less than a 44 caliber, we would actually change that um, to when hunting with round ball, maybe no less than 44 caliber, and just leave it at that. So that I could use, I have a gun, it's a 41 caliber, shoots a 400 grain bullet. Um, it'll drop anything in Hawaii. Uh, and, you know, it just, and it's an accurate gun, something I'd like to shoot. Uh, so these are things, these are the types of ways that we would like to have changes offered to us. It's just real simple, make a change. Uh, archery, for example, uh, Ryan, I know you're an archer. It says, no person shall possess any arrows equipped with explosive heads or heads containing drugs or poison. Only arrows having a minimum blade cutting diameter with of three quarters of an inch are permitted. Depending on how you read that, that means that all you could have in your quiver is a quiver full of broadheads. And that means that my rubber blunts or my judo points or what have you, I couldn't have in my, I mean, technically speaking, right? Uh, shouldn't be there. So we would change that to no person shall possess any arrows equipped with explosive heads or heads containing drugs or poison. Only arrows having a minimum blade cutting diameter of width of three quarters of an inch are permitted. The exact same language we would just add for hunting and just leave it at that um, without getting too complicated. And this is how we would like to see, you know, some of these changes given back to us if you want us to submit them for you to DLNR. Uh, keep it simple for us. We're not a, uh, so anyway, if we could ask uh, folks for that help, we, we would appreciate it. Anybody else have any comments on the rules change? Okay, now, Malia. Thank you, this is Malia Hall. Um, now we move on to the elections of officers. We will start with the position of chair, and um, I'd open the floor for nominations. I'd like to nominate Nani Fogelang. Mm -hmm. Please speak into the microphone. Uh, excuse <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes, I nominate Nani Fogelang. Well, um, I, I actually um, feel that um, a chair needs to be an active hunter. I, I did take hunter education, but I'm not an active hunter. And so for that reason, I, I would feel um, insufficient. So, so what about vice chair? That I will continue to be if so elected. <laughs> so I nominate you for vice chair. How's that? We're, we're working on chair now, and then we can get to vice chair right now. Oh, after. wrong chair. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so you're declining uh, the nomination of chair then? I think so. I, I, I think it should be an active hunter. Uh, right. Okay. So noted. I'll, I'll reopen the floor for a nomination for another commissioner. Other nominations? <laughs> okay. You can also, people, you can self nominate if you'd like to. Yeah, if nobody's going to nominate a chair, I will um, agree to take this position on. However, uh, there is a, c a condition that I would take this on, and that would be as if I could have Nani as a vice chair. Hat set. 
I don't know if we can make a conditional chairship. Oh, Sorry. Um, <laughs> we'd have to motion first. Um, okay. we'd like to uh, make a nomination for Mr. O'Keefe. Okay. I'd like uh, to second that nomination. I'm, I'm going to decline. I think I'm a little too new in this position to really be able to chair this effectively, but thank you for the honor. Oh, nobody wants it. Okay. <laughs> so we have a nomination for um, Tom Lodge. Does anybody want to make a motion and a second on that? Move to close. Okay, I'll second. second. <laughs> okay. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Tom is the chair for once more. And then now we'll move on to vice chair. May, may I make this one comment sure. here? Um, for those of you from Pune, my time is up December. So we would really like to have somebody from Pune. Um, and I can talk to you about that too. <laughs> there you see you're smiling over there. Okay, got it. All right, we'll open up nominations for vice chair now. Well, I okay. believe Nani Pogline was... Uh, Asked to serve in that is agreed, so I nominate her for vice chair. I second that. I accept. Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, sorry. Is anybody <laughs> else would like to nominate any other people? Sorry. Move to close. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? All right. Nani Pogline will be this year's chair. Vice chair, sorry. <laughs> well, she'd be the chair if Tom doesn't show up, so maybe we'll... <laughs> 